Hello, welcome to my channel. You're watching What Helen Reads and I'm Helen. And today I am talking close proximity slash forced proximity romance recommendations. So today I've actually got 10 romance recommendations for you, um, which features couples who are in close proximity or forced proximity with one another um, which absolutely contributes to um, their developing relationship and how they feel about each other um, and there's a variety here of actual forced proximity in the sense that two people are forced to be together that didn't want to be um, and uh, in addition to um, some more roommate sort of uh, situations. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Hideaway Heart by Melanie Harlow and this one was book two in the Cherry Tree Harbour series. It's a small town romance and basically features a um, country singer star who is known to the general public as Pixie Hart but her real name is Kelly. Now she wants to take a bit of a break from her singing career and just go on a bit of a retreat and she's decided that she is going to stay in sort of an isolated cabin by herself it quite close to Cherry Tree harbour however her brother doesn't want her to go um, without a bodyguard or someone to make sure that her security is taken care of and um, because there's lots of crazy fans out there but she's adamant she wants to go alone however her brother doesn't listen and he calls on um the help of his friend Xander now Xander is ex-military I think he's an ex-navy seal um who is now retired and he's just about to open up his own bar but he's got some time um that he can um give to his friend as a bit of a favor and he agrees to go in bodyguard um kelly um while she's in town of course when he turns up to be her bodyguard she is not happy at all so this is sort of dubbed as a bit of an enemies um to love a sort of romance but they're not really enemies she's just a little bit upset that her brother is forced this bodyguard on her and so isn't particularly nice to him um when she first meets him however it's not too long before um, they start to get on a little bit better um, and she just accepts the situation and that he's going to be hanging around. The thing is that she's um, only rented quite a small um, sort of cabin. There's only one bedroom um, and so they find themselves in very close proximity together while she's there on her retreat um, with him kind of um, looking after her. Um, and um, over the course of um, a couple of days leading up to a week, and they spend more and more time together, get to know each other, and he takes her out in Cherry Tree Harbour, um, out for meals, um, to see the family and things like that, and um, their relationship goes from there, so really enjoyed that one. Then the next one I want to recommend is Storm by Carrie Ann Cole, and this is book one in the Ashes and Embers series, which is kind of a rock star romance series. Storm is a guitarist in the Ashes and Embers band, um, and he is on his way home from um, a gig. He has got a remote sort of um, house um, up in the mountains, and it gets quite snowy there, and he's kind of um, on his way there just to spend a couple of days having some downtime and being by himself. And then the heroine in this one is Evie. She is um, a marketing sort of manager and she's basically been to a conference and now she is um, on her way home. But the sat nav has taken her um, a strange route um, and she ends up getting stranded in the snow um, on the way uh, back from this place. Um, and Storm happens to be driving by, sees that she is uh, broken down on the side of the road and offers to give her a lift. And so, um, at first she is a little bit scared of him, she doesn't recognise him as a famous rock star and he is dressed typically as you would expect a rock star to be dressed, um, has uh, tattoos and even has some black eye makeup on and things like that as well. So she's not, at first she's thinking oh I'm not really sure I want to get in the car with him but she doesn't really have any other, other options and she does. The thing is um, as they're going along, he's trying to get her to uh, safety to a phone so maybe she can call for help. Um, then he, he basically um, slips off the road and they end up crashing the car and being stuck in this ditch. And then they end up having to spend 
um, time alone together in this vehicle so now they are in very very close proximity trapped in this car for a couple of days and all they have for company is um, Storm's uh, rather large dog they do have a little bit of food and water uh, but otherwise they just need to pass the time away until it the weather has calmed down a little bit and they can go and get help and get the cars towed and back to safety and during this time obviously they start to talk to each other get to know each other a little bit better um, and also in very close quarters they have amazing chemistry together and so they kind of have a little bit of a moment um, this period of close proximity is only really in the very first part of the book and then after that it's kind of what happens after they get out and kind of go back to their normal lives um, and what that means for them at um, and their relationship and how they're going to take it from there but I really enjoyed that one so then the next one is The Right Move um, by Liz Tom Ford um, and this is book two in the Windy City series in this one we are following Ryan and Indy and this one is a sports romance it's also a fake dating romance they're also roommates um, and this is a best friend sort of brother trope as well so lots of different tropes in this one I'm sure the majority of you have heard about this one if you have not read it because um the so many people read this one last year absolutely loved it and Ryan Shea um is a very very popular book boyfriend but essentially Ryan is a basketball star very very uh wealthy very very famous and as such he's kind of become a bit of a recluse he basketball means absolutely everything to him and he also wants to make sure that his re reputation goes untarnished which basically means he doesn't really go out to many social functions because he doesn't want to be seen out drunk or doing anything he shouldn't or being photographed doing anything um strange and as a result he's become quite isolated um and other than work he doesn't really do very much at all now he's got a twin sister and his twin sister's best friend is Indy she is a flight attendant that we met in book one and we also know that she's recently fallen out with her boyfriend when she caught him cheating on her and therefore she's moved out of her apartment and now she's got nowhere to stay so Ryan's sister basically says to her oh please will you do me uh, absolute solid can Indy come and stay with you while she sorts herself out and gets herself a new pad um and Ryan reluctantly agrees to do this because he really cares about his sister, um, although he's nervous about having someone in his apartment with him. Indy just blows in a breath of fresh air, completely uh, ruffles all of his feathers because he likes everything neat, orderly and tidy. Um, and Indy, it comes in with a bit of a whirlwind really, it makes a bit of a mess. But um, they find a compromise, they start to, um, enjoy each other's company and then an opportunity presents itself where Ryan and Indy kind of need to fake date because Ryan needs to put on a good impression with his kind of his boss um at work because um he's got this reputation for work 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 and no play at all um and his kind of his the general manager or the boss of this team um basically wants him to have a bit more of a rounded um a rounded um kind of work life balance um, and so he on the spur of the minute decides to say that Indy is actually his girlfriend um, and in in return Indy has asked Ryan to go to her to a friend's wedding because her ex-boyfriend is going to be there and she really wants to demonstrate that the ex-boyfriend hasn't ruined her life and she has moved on um, and um, I just absolutely love this one so the close proximity in this one is because they are actually living together and then pretending to fake date as well. So keeping on the theme as kind of like roommate sort of situation, uh, it's slightly different but I want to talk about this one here, Heartless by Elsie Silver. Now this one is a uh, single dad, age gap romance, small town, grumpy sunshine but also nanny uh, and live in nanny situation. So the hero in this one is called Cade. He has got a younger son called Luke and he needs a nanny for the summer, someone to come and look after Luke while he is out busy on the farm because Cade is also um, a very handsome cowboy. And this is where we meet Willa. Willa is best friends from the heroine from book one and she suggests that uh, Willa is Luke's nanny. Now Cade um, is reluctant at first but is left with little choice and Luke and Willa get on like a house on fire so he eventually agrees to it and then what happens from there is obviously 
Willa does become the nanny, she also moves in to Cade's house. And so now they're in close proximity together, living with each other. Um, and Cade um, starts to develop feelings when he sees the way that Willa is looking after his son, treating his son, um, and also helping out around the house as well. Um, and uh, Willow is very, very uh, sassy and fiery and absolutely brings Cade out of his shell um, and helps to kind of like wear down his grumpiness. Um, but Cade is another fantastic um, hero and a book boyfriend for sure. And then the final one I wanted to talk about, which is also another roommate situation, is P.S. You're Intolerable by Julia Wolfe. This is book three in the Harder They Fall series. Um, and this, again, is like a, a workplace romance, but also um, they end up becoming roommates. So in this one, we're following Elliot and um, Kit, or Catherine, as Elliot likes to call her. And essentially, Elliot is a billionaire. He runs his own company, and Kit comes to work for him as his personal assistant. Now, what he doesn't realise when he first hires her, that Kit is actually um, pregnant. Um, she has uh, fallen pregnant by a very close friend of hers who turned out to be not that great a friend after all because he's now deserted her and gone back to live in Australia. Um, and when he left, he not only left her um, to bring up the baby by herself, uh, but also in a bit of a dire situation with her housing because they were supposed to be doing up a house together and he's kind of gone off um, with the money and she can no longer afford to do up this house. Later on, as she um, works for Elliot, obviously it becomes time for her to um, take maternity leave and, and go on maternity leave. Um, and Elliot is absolutely distraught without her. He's become very, very used to how she does things around the office um, and tries to convince her to come back early. Um, but there is one occasion where he needs to get some paperwork from her house. So he turns up and when he sees um, the, like, where she is living and the fact that this house really isn't fit for purpose at all um, he absolutely offers her and the baby to come and stay with him in his house because he's got plenty of rooms um, and he's going to help her sort out the whole situation and of course when they start to live together and she starts to live in this space they learn much more about each other and their relationship go very much moves from where he's her boss and she's his employee um, to much more uh, like a roommate friends and then they go from friends um, ultimately to lovers and it's fantastic to see how their relationship develops and how he absolutely starts to support her and her child. Okay so moving away from um, sort of like contemporary romances into sort of the monster genre and the first one I want to recommend is Soul Eater by Lily Main. Now this is book one in the monstrous series and it's also an MM romance. The main characters in this one are Wynne and Danny and Will is our soul eater. Essentially the world where we live is now inhabited by monsters and there was an event where monsters came through this veil through this sort of portal and now they are kind of inhabiting earth as a result there are um there are now walled cities that are kind of like policed or managed by the military there are massive wastelands of space where um, humans who don't want to live in the cities kind of wander um, but it's not safe there because um, not only are there sort of like bad human groups who are kind of going out you know and um, taking what they can um, stealing from other um, groups um, but also that's where the majority of the monsters lurk and we first introduced this world and our very first monster is win and like i say he's called the soul eater now at first um all that they know about win is that he appears um every certain number of years can't remember exactly how many but say every 10 years he turns up and he starts killing people in massive swathes just whole groups of people he will just come and kill and nothing seem and seemingly nothing can stop him they're not able to stop him um, and now it's um, time again for win to reappear and they've put this military group in front of him to try and bring win down and in as part of this military group there is a soldier called danny um, and when win comes to take out kind of this group um Danny is the only one left standing after the conf confrontation with Wynne and no one knows why Danny is still alive um, after this because no one normally survives when Wynne shows up um, and so they take Danny back to the sort of military base and start to uh, interrogate him to figure out why he's different and what Wynne wants from him. Now Wynne um, then is sort of captured 
and taken to the same place where Danny is, but he's allowed himself to be captured because he's very intrigued by Danny. He wants some answers himself as well, um, and then basically helps, um, essentially helps Danny escape. And then Wynn and Danny kind of go on the road together and end up going on this sort of road trip because Danny is now stuck between a rock and a hard place. He can't go back to the military because if they do, he they're going to interrogate him further and possibly kill him. Um, and he doesn't want to go out into the wilderness by himself because he knows it's not safe. And Wynn seems to be um, friendly, at least to him. Um, and so he has kind of no choice but to tug along with Wynn and go out into the wilderness with Wynn as protection. And then their romance really goes from there. And we learn much more about this kind of... Uh, you know this world this space what all these monsters are um, and it's a really really great series so i would highly recommend moving on then to viper by naomi lucas and sticking with the monster theme this is uh, book one of the naga bride series um, and our hero in this one is rushka and he happens to be a naga so he's a half snake half human um, sort of creature and he is a pit viper hence the name of the book viper and then the heroine in this one is a human woman called Gemma now this one is kind of a cap to captive situation and hence there's kind of enforced proximity together at least um, Gemma ends up being in enforced proximity with um, with Vrushka um, in this world, essentially, um, Earth has long since been abandoned. Um, a terrible catastrophe happened several thousands of years prior and Earth is no longer inhabitable. And all the humans have kind of fled into the sky, into the stars, and are now living and um, kind of and now living on other planets and also kind of like traveling through the galaxy now over the years they've obviously encountered other alien races and they're about to be in an imminent war with another alien species and they decide that they're going to send a um an explorer team back to earth because they believe they've left technology on the planet that may be helpful to them when fighting this war and so they send down a small kind of like group if you like um filled with not only soldiers but scientists as well to try and um get to earth figure out if it's now in inhabitable again and figure out where these um supposed weapons are of course when they land what they find is that now living on earth are this group of vipers and the vipers are in desperate need of females in their community so they can mate with them and so they do a deal with the male humans um, in this task force um, and say hey hand over your women we notice you've got three or four of them in your group hand the women over to us um, and then we will show you where the weapons are and so desperate are the humans that the may men in the group decide to do this and they set the women free and hand them over to the to the naga people essentially now there's way more nagas than there are women there's only three three women at this point and so the nagas kind of do an agreement between them that basically says whoever can they'll let the women run off into the forest and whichever snake manages to snag themselves a human woman gets to keep her and mate with her and all will be well and viper or vrushka our viper in this story absolutely sets his sights on Gemma, and he with absolute single determination he hunts her down captures her then takes her captive and takes her back to his lair now the thing is she does also get injured along the way and he then takes her back um and care takes for her while she recovers um uh, but now they're very in close proximity together forced proximity i should say because he's now got her sort of uh, it's a now a captive captive arrangement where she is now living in his den um, and their relationship goes from there Next up, a recent read for me, Barbarian Mine by Ruby Dixon. This is book, book four in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. This one is a sci-fi alien romance and we are following Hazel and Rook. Now, this one is a sort of another captive, captive sort of arrangement. Hazel is a human who has landed, crash landed on this um, ice planet that the um, that the human women called not Hoth and um, Rook is one of our sort of purple aliens who live on this planet however he's not from the same group um, as that we've seen in books one two and three um, in fact his father thinks of them as the bad ones and from a little boy he was told not to go anywhere near the bad ones um, but then later when his father died when he was still young he ended up having to bring himself up but stay away from um, this other group and therefore he's kind of lived very much in 
in isolation, he hasn't properly learned the language, so he's a bit more car caveman, a bit more barbarian than some of the other characters. However, one day he stumbles across Hazel. Hazel's out looking for help because two of the other aliens in her group um, have got injured and she's out looking for help for them um, and she comes across uh, Rook and um, he doesn't know what to make of her at all he is a little bit startled um, when he first sees her so he does the only thing he can think of to do which is just club her over the head and take it, her back to his lair now Hazel tries to escape at first but then quickly realises that Rook isn't with the rest of the group doesn't seem to know what's going on and they have uh, difficulty at first communicating with each other but over time they learn to communicate with each other she teaches him uh, the language and he teaches her how to survive um, and because they're queries so in this sort of um, in this story they get um, in order to survive on this planet they need to be implanted with this uh, sort of a symbiotic um, creature essentially that they call um, the Kuis and then basically when the Kuis resonate with each other they essentially um, announce to everyone that you are fated mates or mates with this person and of course Hazel and Rook resonate for each other their Kuis sing to each other um, and so therefore they want to be together and um, Hazel gets pregnant and um, Rook takes her to uh, a, a very distant cave by the seashore but basically towards the end of her pregnancy she gets very very sick um, and he doesn't know what to do and he starts to get quite worried um, and then as luck would have it part of the um, group um, with, other, with the other human women stumble across them in their place and realise that Hazel um, obviously recognise who Hazel is, really really glad to see her again but also realise that she um, is quite sick and uh, Rook then has no choice but to go back with what he thinks of as the bad ones in order to save Hazel's life and get the healer that she needs. So this is really nice, it starts out like I say as a bit of a captive, captive situation but then they spend a lot of time in isolation together just living together for a couple of years actually until the rest of the group find them and they're taken um, back um, to join the rest of the community. So then another sort of sort of sci-fi romance is Hold by Claire Kent and this is book one in the Holds series and we're following Kane and Rihanna. Now this one is again sort of novella length, it's just about 180 pages and in this one our heroine Rihanna is convicted of a fairly minor crime but still she is sentenced to a prison planet. Um, and where she's going to be dropped onto the planet it's going to be pretty rough uh, no one really ever escapes these planets and it's survival of the fittest and as she is going to be dropped onto this planet one of the kind of prison guards if you like gives her some advice and says if you want to survive down there um, find the uh, biggest baddest uh, most capable male um, in the prison offer yourself to him and he will protect you and therefore you will survive um, and when she goes down onto this prison planet she spots Cain um, and does just that she offers herself to him in exchange for protection um, Cain um, does agree to these terms um, and then basically is the one that looks after her while they are in prison together. Now luckily Kane does have his kind of his own cell that is actually lockable so they have a little bit of security, a little bit of safety um, and he can make sure that she is guarded and kept safe but as a result they obviously spend a lot of time together are in very close quarters and um, Rihanna is very reliant on Kane for uh, safety and security um, but she offers herself freely to him as part of the bargain um, but she very quickly finds herself enjoying her time with Cain, getting to know him and their relationship from, goes from there. Right, so the final book that I want to recommend today is a mafia romance and it's called Dark Russian Angel by Odette Stone and this is book one in the Vancouver Mafia Romance series. Um, this is kind of got a bit of a bodyguard theme although it's a bit of an unusual one because in this one we're following Andrusha and Olivia. Olivia uh, is a dancer at a strip club and one night after work she sees something she shouldn't and she sees a very bad uh, man kill somebody in the car park and um, she manages to escape 
um, and goes to the police and then she becomes the star witness in a case about against this man as a result she's kind of put into sort of uh, witness protection special protection with the police however this guy that she witness absolutely wants to silence her and he knows a lot of people he uh, is sort of connected to the mafia and as a result he's got the police in his pocket and so uh, there's an attempt on her life on more than one occasion now in russia hears about this now he is actually in fact head of sort of the russian ma mafia in vancouver and he hears about this and this guy that she is going to be a witness for is actually one of his biggest rivals and he really really wants to um, ensure that she makes it to court so she can testify against this guy and therefore it will help and drush her out enormously because it will take out the uh, the competition as it were and um, so when he hears that the police have not done a very good job of protecting her he decides the only thing that he could possibly do is go in capture her for himself and then keep her safe until the trial and that's exactly what he does so he goes in rescues olivia from a third attempt at her life uh, takes her back to his place and then basically uh, makes sure that she stays in his bedroom in his apartment um so that she remains safe basically while they can um, get her to uh, get her to the hearing so this becomes a like I say, a close proximity sort of romance because again another one where they are sort of living together but this is very much Andrusha kind of being her bodyguard keeping her safe um, and despite the fact that he's not a particularly good man himself he absolutely is not going to hurt Olivia and their relationship goes from there right so there we have it that's um 10 um, romance recommendations that feature couples who are in close proximity or forced proximity with one another i hope you enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up remember to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content from me and if you want to recommend a book for me to read um i'm just a reminder that that is a book recommendation form in the description box down below so thank you very much for taking the time to watch and i hope to see you next time Bye. Um, the Kindle series in particular is a post-apocalyptic post -apocalyptic, um <sighs> I can't believe that I'm really, really, I, I'm sure it will pick up on camera, but hopefully it won't be too bad. Otherwise I'll be fuming because I've got to record three and edit three videos today to keep on top of my schedule. And so it's just a bit annoying really. Anyway, um, and she suggests that we'll let it be uh, Cade's nanny. No, <laughs> not Cade's nanny. Have I said already? So this is Heartless by Elsie Silver. It's book two in the Chestnut Springs series. So then hopefully I've said it and now you can put this in. Who <laughs> should do this? It causes a problem, doesn't it? Because now I've got hair all over my face day in a place quite, quite close to ch cherry cherry quite close to cherry tree oh, cherry tree harbour it's a bit of a tongue twister